coming up on Doctype. Have an awesome idea, but don't know where to begin? We'll show you how to kickstart the design process. Then, files, we all have them, but where do you put them? We'll show you the ropes of Amazon S3. So cut up some apples and get crazy with the cheese whiz, because it's time for Doctype. <laughs> This episode of Doctype is brought to you by the Future of Web Apps Miami and Viewpoint. I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jim Hoskins. And you're watching Doctype. Whether you're a designer that wants to learn a little bit of coding or a developer that thinks everything they make looks like crap, Doctype is here to show you the latest tips, tricks, and tools to help you take your next project to the next level. Oh, and we're going to the next level. Oh, yes. So every year, there's a whole bunch of conferences. But the conference that Jim and I make sure we go to every year is the Future of Web Apps Miami, or FOA, as it's more affectionately known. And we're happy to announce that this year, we are media partners with FOA Miami 2010. Right, and for the rest of the month of January, we're going to be syndicated on the Think Vitamin blog from Carsonified, which is the company that puts on FOA. So if you're watching on Think Vitamin, and this is your first episode of Doctype, you might want to watch the end because there's going to be just a little bit of a surprise. Ooh, a surprise. Oh, yes. But first we're talking about the design process, right? That's right. So let's get into it. Getting started on any project is always the hardest part, but before you move on to page layout, there's a couple things that you're going to want to consider. Now, I want to emphasize that there are literally an infinite number of ways to design a web page, and this is just the process that I like to go through. First, you want to ask, what are the goals of the page that you're designing? If you keep this in mind during every step of the process, you should end up with a pretty solid design by the end. Next, create a list of what needs to be on the page. In other words, what buttons, pieces of text, and widgets will help the user accomplish their goals. Last but not least, prioritize your list by what's most important. Not all page elements are created equal, so you'll want to emphasize the most common actions and de-emphasize the ones that are less commonly used. The first part is easier said than done, but once you go through the process a couple times, it becomes less difficult. Now that you have your page elements, you can start arranging them. I usually start out in pen and paper, and then I move on to an image editing tool like Balsamic or Photoshop, just depending on how much detail I need. Now, just for a minute, let's pretend that we're designing a blog. You should try to design from the inside out and focus on the most important things first. Because we're creating a blog, the most important thing here are the posts. The next most important thing is probably the navigation. So let's create that and then build out the header a little bit. Finally, there's usually some other links or sidebar widgets that we'll want to include, but they're the least important thing, so we'll add those in last. Now, obviously, this is a very simplified representation, but hopefully it gives you some idea of the process. If you're a programmer that appreciates written tests, or if you're unsure about some of your design decisions, here are a few things you can do in an image editor to test the aesthetics of your design. Look at your web page in black and white. This will help you make sure you're using contrast effectively and not just relying on color alone. Also, try inverting the colors. This will look strange at first, but it will help engage the right side of your brain and force you to see your design in a new way. Try flipping your web page horizontally or vertically. This can sometimes reveal problems with visual balance, especially when too many elements are bunched together. Next, Jim is going to be talking about Amazon S3, but first, let's take a second to check out FOA Miami. The future of web apps is back in Miami at the beautiful Colony Theater on South Beach. It's a three-day event from February 22nd to the 24th and features workshops and presentations from the coolest people in the web industry, like Gary Vaynerchuk of Wine Library TV, Fred Wilson from Union Square Ventures, Tara Hunt, the author of The Woofy Factor, and John Rezig, the creator of jQuery. To learn about topics like HTML5, JavaScript, jQuery, and online marketing, Jim and I have attended FOA Miami every year, and we're definitely not going to miss this one. It's going to be awesome. To learn more and get your ticket, check out Carsona. So you want to host a lot of files and have fast, reliable access to them? Well, Amazon S3 might be exactly what you're looking for. We'll show you how to get started with S3. Amazon's Simple Storage Service, or S3, allows you to store and serve files from Amazon servers. What's really great about it is it allows you to store an unlimited amount of data, and you only pay for what you use. It's built with application builders in mind, and everything is managed through an API. It's also great for personal use using desktop applications. There's even solutions that allow you to back up your hard drive right to S3, making it a very affordable off-site backup solution. 
Amazon S3 is really built for developers and is part of a larger suite of products known as the Amazon Web Services. All this can make getting started a little bit difficult, but don't worry, we're here to help. So the first thing you want to do is navigate to aws.amazon.com slash s3 and click sign up for Amazon S3. You'll need to either be logged into your Amazon account or create an Amazon account. From there, it'll show you the data transfer rates and storage rates for S3, and at the bottom of that page, it'll ask you for your credit card info. Fill it in, confirm your billing address, and continue. If all goes well, you should see a success message, but this message isn't very helpful. It doesn't tell you where to go next. So what you want to do is go back to the home page and click security credentials under your account. On this page, you should see a table of access keys. These are like the login and passwords for your S3 account. The access key IDs are like your login, and those are fair enough to share with people, they're public. The secret keys are like your password, and you actually have to click show to view them on the page. Those you don't want to share with anybody. Now you can read the documentation to learn how to integrate S3 with your web applications. For instance, Twitter uses S3 to store its avatars. It's also great for storing user uploads, but we're going to look at how to interact with S3 from your desktop. For the Mac, I really like S3 Hub. A popular Windows option is Cloudberry S3 Explorer, and you can use the S3 Firefox plugin on any platform. The first thing you're going to want to do is enter your security credentials into the application. From there, you're going to want to create a bucket. A bucket is like a folder, but it's actually the subdomain in the URL of your files. It has to be globally unique. Once you've created your bucket, navigate into it, and then you can start uploading files. By default, the files you upload will be protected, but you can make them public for sharing. You can also create a temporary URL that will expire after a certain amount of time. You can also use access control to decide who can write and read to your bucket. This is just the tip of what S3 can do, and there's libraries in pretty much every language to help you get started, and some great documentation. Viewpoint is the simplest and most elegant way for creative professionals to present their work to clients. No more emailing images or manually building presentations. Password-protected project galleries keep all your work organized in one place. Organize your files by project, control and gather client feedback, automatically version control your designs, and present images, videos, or flash animations. So whether you're developing a simple website design, an online banner campaign, or a complex web application, Viewpoint easily manages the design review process and keeps everyone on track with getting designs approved. Viewpoint is a hosted web application created by designers from real-world experience. Get your work approved quickly. Get Viewpoint. That's all for this week. Let us know what you think in the comments, especially if you're watching on Think Vitamin. Also, stop by our Facebook fan page and follow at DocTypeTV on Twitter. And if you have a question you'd like answered on a future episode of DocType, send us an email at questions at DocType.tv. And if you subscribe via iTunes or RSS, you'll never miss an episode of DocType. So until next Tuesday, remember that every great web page starts with DocType. Dude, I can't believe that you actually like seriously bought one of those. Is it even comfortable at all, or is it? Dude, I love this Snuggie. I always thought it'd be like kind of itchy, but I guess. Um, no, this is like top quality fleece. That's what you see, label Snuggy. If you get like that slanket stuff, man, that's no good. And get real Snuggy. I guess the slanket doesn't come with a book light. I mean, that's probably like one of the main reasons for buying it, right? This thing is like a $20 value. I mean, look at this like space age technology. This is how you know it's 2010. That is ridiculous. I can't believe you bought a Snuggy. Now I can see my computer.